I want to talk a bit about what instructional coaching is, the essentially principles that are behind the work and the, and the process that we do when we do instructional coaching. And I, I want to distinguish instructional coaching from other approaches to coaching. First thing I, I want to talk about is what we mean by instructional coaching and how it's similar or different from other approaches. And usually when you talk about coaching, it's put into two different boxes, facilitative coaching or directive coaching. Now, facilitative coaching, growth coaching from Australia, and cognitive coaching from the United States would all probably be forms of facilitative coaching. And facilitative coaches work from the assumption that the person they're working with already knows what they need to do. But through the coaching process, through questions, through listening, through mediating the thinking of the partner in the coaching process, um, the person realizes what they want to work on, they set a goal, and then they, they plan out how they're going to hit the goal working with the coach. The metaphor for facilitative coaching is a sounding board. I don't share ideas, I don't share expertise, I don't share knowledge, but I do facilitate your thinking through the way I ask questions and listen and, and work with you. The other kind of coaching is directive coaching. And usually when you hear people talk about coaching, it's either facilitative or directive. In directive coaching, the idea is the assumption is the teacher doesn't know a particular teaching practice they need to learn. And my job is to make sure the teacher learns it. And I work from the assumption that they're going to have to get it. And I'm going to have to describe it and follow up and make sure they do it the right way. The metaphor for the facilitative approach is a sounding board. The metaphor for the directive approach is an expert with an apprentice. And the assumption, again, in the facilitative approach is the teacher already knows what to do. And the teacher is doing the decision making. But in the directive approach, the assumption that the teacher doesn't know what to do and the decision maker is the coach. So often people, when they hear about coaching, they put it in one box or the other box, but I think there's a, a third way, and the third way is what I call dialogical coaching. Now in dialogical coaching, the assumption is that often teachers do know what they need to work on, but sometimes it's helpful to have a person, an expert in instructional practices, who can help you learn new things to meet your goal. Billions of dollars has been spent studying what effective instruction looks like. And to have a person, a coach, a partner who positions you as a decision maker, nevertheless, to help you learn practices to hit your goal seems to make a lot of sense. This is not directive coaching, though. It's dialogical coaching, because in dialogical coaching, the teacher remains the decision maker. And as I describe practices as a dialogical coach, I always say, do you want to do it this way? Do you want to modify it? Is this the practice you want to do? I don't, I don't give advice. I don't show up like an expert but I have expertise to share with my partner, the professional. Which gets to the second thing, which is our approach with teachers. When we do dialogical coaching, instructional coaching, we position the teacher as a partner, which is to say we position the teacher as the person who's in control of what happens in his or her classroom. They are the decision makers. And we have a set of principles we work from. Equality, choice, voice, dialogue, reflection, praxis, reciprocity. If you want, you can see a uh, uh, video on each of those principles plus an overview video at RadicalLearners.com and just go there and poke around on the blog and you'll see them. But the core idea of the partnership approach is I honor the autonomy of the professional with whom I'm working. I, I see them as, as important or more important than me. And in some ways, uh, I, I see coaching as an act of service and support to the teacher. I never push my perspective, but if I have a chance to share something of value, I do. I also don't silence myself. I might say, well, here's what I'm thinking about this. Would you like to hear it? But I don't, I don't say, you have to do this, or this is my advice. I just say, let me give you another point of view. It's a back and forth dialogue. And when we use that process in coaching, well, there's a step-by-step -step approach we take, and we call it the impact cycle. We identify, we learn, we improve. During identify, first thing we identify is a clear picture of current reality. We might do that through video, through interviewing kids, through looking at student work, through observing the class and sharing data. Once we've got a clear picture of current reality, then we set a goal. And the coach has a set of questions, a little bit like solution-focused coaching, if people are familiar with that, where we say, on a scale of one to 10, how close was this class to your ideal? Why do you give yourself that number? What would have to change to move it forward? What's a strategy you want to use to try to hit the goal and so forth? And we, we help the teacher set what we call a peer's goal. Powerful, easy to achieve, emotionally compelling, reachable, which is we can measure it, we have a strategy, 
and student focus. And once we've got the goal, we help the teacher learn the new strategy. So that might involve describing it clearly with a checklist, allowing the teacher a course, and encouraging the teacher to modify it to make it fit her classroom. And then modeling it by either going in the classroom or watching a video or going to see another teacher try it out, but see it before we do it. And then in the improvement stage, teacher implements this new strategy to try to hit a goal. And usually they have to make modifications, change the strategy, change the way they teach the strategy, change the goal, change the way they measure the prog progress towards the goal, something like that. Now we've done 20 years of research on this. If you go to instructionalcoaching.com slash research, you can have a look at the, the studies we've done, many of them peer reviewed. And uh, if you want, um, on instructionalcoaching.com, there are tons of forms, well over 100, dozens of videos. And if you can download it, you can share it. We don't want you to sell it, but we want to put it in people's hands so they can use it. There are many situations where facilitative coaching is the way to go. And there are other situations where instructional coaching is the way to go. But what we would say is if you're going to be a facilitative coach, you need to understand how to do that. You need to have the skills. And the same thing goes true for an instructional coach. And to be trained as a facilitative coach to do instructional coaching, that's a bit like having a dentist do brain surgery. We want the right kind of skills to do the right kind of coaching. And uh, there's a place for both. Both can make a big difference. And uh, I think the important thing is to see that they, what they are and where they can go.